ex-Muslim's home set on fire by Hindu thugs for marrying Hindu girl. On April 15th, a mob led by a local right-wing Hindu group set the house of an ex-Muslim gym instructor, Sajid, on fire in a village in Uttar Pradesh, India. Sajid was accused of kidnapping a Hindu girl who turned out to be a 22-year-old woman. On April 11th, Sajid and his girlfriend, Rakita, eloped and certified their marriage as, certified their marriage, as well as Sajid's conversion to Hinduism and his name change to Sahil. He even made a newspaper ad that announced his conversion and name change. When the woman's family couldn't find Rakita, they filed a police report claiming that their daughter was missing and kidnapped. On April 13th, police were able to recover the woman, but were unable to locate Sahil, who had fled. NDTV reported that a French Hindutva group called uh, Dar, uh, Dharam Jangran Samman Vai Song burned down Sahil's house as well as the adjoined home of his family members, accusing Sahil of love jihad. Later, videos began circulating online of the woman explaining that she consented to the marriage and went with Sahil of her own volition. A probe has been launched to investigate the police's failure to maintain law and order, and some have already faced disciplinary action for negligence. Eight individuals have been have been arrested in relation to the arson. Okay, so even when you go out of... So this man apparently is not Hindu enough for them, right? Like if you... Okay, even, this is why I wanted to cover the story. Yes. Yeah, so he like leaves Islam. He's like, look, I'm a Hindu. I'm even going to change my Katam name, okay? I'm, I'm assuming he's doing that for love because he was he wants to marry this girl. Apparently, and... they've been in a secret relationship for years. Years. All right. And he's like, for you, I will give up Islam. For you, I will you know, turn my back on Allah for the sake of love. This is actually beautiful. <laughs> right? But so you, ch you leave Islam, you become Hindu, you change your name, and just in case people are not aware of it, you buy an ad in the newspaper telling people that, hey, people, I'm announcing to the world that I be Hindu now, okay? Isn't that what Hindus, many Hindus, what Hindu to want coming back home, becoming That's Hindu? That's the thing. Garwapsi, they're supposed to come back home to Hinduism, their true identity as Indians. Right. So the idea for people who don't know, like uh, so many people in India think like the Muslims in India and in Pakistan are not actual Muslims because they think like they're ethnically they're, and regionally they are the same as I mean, technically, you know, the, the ethnic mix of Pakistan and India and Muslims in India are the same thing. I'm not saying they're all the same ethnicity, but it's the same mix, the same bag of ethnicities. Um, same background, same history, same land. And a lot of Hindus are like, oh, this re Islam religion has been imposed on us. And we are like, um, in, I mean, I don't agree with this, but they think that they're inherently Hindu. And these people have just need to come back home, come back to Hinduism. Well, this man did that. <laughs> I mean, this man did that. <laughs> I don't know. What do you, why are you come? But they, it's interesting because at the same time, there are some people think like once a Muslim, always a Muslim. And they're like, you're a, if you're a Muslim, you're a Muslim. Again, YouTube, these are not my views. I'm describing other people's views that you're Muslim by blood for some reason. And this is just like a trick. Like, oh, no, he's a Muslim. Like, this is why a lot of people call when I'm I'm an ex-Muslim. I A lot of Hindus uh, always in, in the live chat tell me that, like, no, you're, you're a Muslim. Once a Muslim, you have they say they tell me they tell me that I have a Muslim DNA. Um, so there's no way to get rid of that. Right, which is Muslim so, blood. They talk about yeah. your Muslim blood. They exactly they talk about my Muslim blood. <laughs> they like you can't be an ex-Muslim, you're a Muslim. It's uh, if you say like you're you're hiding your true Muslim identity, like it's in yeah, you can't change that. But I guess I, I I'm I'm imagining is, is that attitude. So this man, even though he's a Hindu, they they can't tolerate a Muslim Hindu marriage. And even though it's not a Muslim Hindu marriage, it's a Hindu Hindu marriage, they're like, no, you are you're you're always a Muslim in our eyes, right? That's is that the the way of thinking here? Probably. Essentially, yes. Like yeah. 
It's complicated by the fact that they did elope, which is already going to be a highly contentious and possibly life-threatening thing to undertake in India. I mean, it, it's not unusual for a couple to elope and then the man ends up getting lynched because they think that they kidnapped their the woman when really the couple, the relationship was not approved of. So they're trying to escape and go live their freaking lives individually by themselves as consenting adults. But they get accused of kidnapping. There are people in jail for this, you know? Um, and then the police forcibly bring the woman back to her family. And sometimes she gets forcibly remarried to someone of the family's choosing. So that itself is already a very contentious issue. And the fact that there is an inter-community aspect to this makes it even more hot and controversial, right? Um, there now were, read this one. People be saying it's racializing religious identity. That's exactly what it is. Both the people who think once you're a Muslim, you can never leave Islam. And both the people who think like you should be coming back to Hinduism because your ethnicity demands that. Uh, both of that is racializing religious identity. But yeah, go on. Well, and what you were saying about people thinking, you know, oh, well, all people of the subcontinent were originally Hindus, like come back to being Hindus. Some very extreme Hindu for people, actually, I don't even know how extreme this is, but they, they'll extend that as far as Indonesia. They'll extend that all the way oh, to yeah. Malaysia. Malaysia, yeah, yeah, the greater, that's going to be the greatest, the future great India, Indian empire. So they actually say that they care about the well-being of Malaysian Muslims, but singularly and only because they used to be Hindus. And one day they will come back to being our Hindu brothers and sisters. Um, one thing that uh, made me sad is the reaction of um, the girl's family. So, um, yeah, this girl has stated in a video recording that she willingly married Sahil. And now this is becoming a huge court thing. She has to make a statement before the magistrate in which she'll likely be pressured to, you know, reject this whole thing. Um, and then uh, on Saturday, wait, where was the quote that I was looking for? Damn. Okay. Okay. Here it is. Um so th this is the statement from her father. My child has been brainwashed. Um, he also admitted his daughter had posted videos of her marriage to, to Sahil on social media. Quote, we are now waiting for her statement, meaning before the magistrate, to be recorded. If she agrees to come with us, that's fine. But if she doesn't, I'll consider her gone for good. So basically, if you turn your back on Sahil, if you throw him under the bus, that's fine. You can come back to our family. If you don't, if you want to be with this person that you've been in a relationship for years that you married willingly, we're disowning you, essentially. That's the way I interpreted that. Okay, so I want, I want to be mad at the family for doing that, but at the same time, this might be a survival statement. A statement that they put out there for like they like there there be mobs out there burning houses. Okay, <laughs> okay. So I don't know. I don't know if I could blame the family of the girl because maybe they need this is like they want to put that out there so that they were like so that they're on the right side so that the, maybe their house is not burned down. You know what I mean? As bad as that sounds, maybe they need to do that. What do you think? I don't think saying I don't think that's particularly necessary. I mean, I, I, I mean, I know it might not be necessary, but better safe than sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, you have a, I mean, it's dangerous, right? Like you might be, if you don't do this, even if there's a 2% chance of the mob coming for you, you might, you might. Better I don't think this is them. a survival statement. This attitude is reflected in the dozens of stories that I've read that are, you know, right. just another iteration of this case. Um, you know, just this happening to a different couple in a different state. It's the same attitude over and over again. Yeah, yeah, Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I just want to point out, uh, first of all, two things. When you said fringe Hindutva, I, for some reason, I heard French Hindutva. And I was like, where, what? There's a group of French Hindutvas in India. Oh, I promise you there is in France. <laughs> <laughs> like okay uh that was kind of i i just had this image of some french really stereotypically looking french people who, with saffron color customs okay <laughs> wait that's hilarious 
don't know. Like instead of a little red scarf, it's like a little (laughs) saffron scarf with a cigarette. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, Also, I just want to point out how this is, you know, the love, the love jihad accusation, right? The the way it works, right? This is one of the reasons why we say, keep saying that love jihad is a, it's a baseless conspiracy theory for people who are not familiar. um, Many people in, in, many Hindus in India think like Muslims are, have this secret conspiracy to come and, you know, capture um, Hindu women um, and change the demographics of India by, just being so so chad at, at in out competing Hindu men over winning over Hindu women and bringing them to Islam by marrying these all these Hindu women, right? Um, and this is why they're they have they're hunting down um, a lot of Muslim men who are in marrying or in a relationship with any Hindu woman. We even seen a whole bunch of documentaries on these on training camps in India of teenagers being trained into identifying whether Hindu women are talking to Muslim men and basically being their own, you know, forces, like, you know, being their own religious moral police and Mm -hmm. outside of the authority of the law, just attacking uh, Muslim uh, men in in defending Hindu women, like just because, and we we keep pointing out that uh, these relationships are completely consensual and people are in love, like they attack weddings, you know, they, uh, they, you know, and they think like they're doing such a good job at protecting their women, you know, there's, there's something about right leaning people and always trying to frame things in the, you know, in protecting women, you know, they always think like they own women and they're, you know, whether if it's of their religion or ethnicity, they feel like if they are, even if they're consensually marrying people or being with people outside of that ethnicity or religion, is as if their property is being stolen away from them and they need to protect that, right? And they get very emotional about, you know, protecting women. And all, uh, by protecting, they mean stopping them from making consensual, des- you know, decisions. So they're not, like, not, not protecting them from harm, but from, you know, from make living based on their own life, making right? sure that their possession is not defiled. Exactly, that's the best way to frame it. But the thing is that we, we they're like, no, these women are being kidnapped, and we were like, this is all happening willingly. They're like, their comeback is that they're being brainwashed. They're always like, these women are being brainwashed. Like, I don't know if you understand, like, how brainwashing works, but like you're they're claiming that all these muslim men in india are so effective like they just like see all these couples who are with each other in india these muslim men are just so effective all of every single one of them is such an effective cult leader that could just make hindu women believe that they want things that they don't actually really want like and you know that and you just you know better, even though you have no idea about anything about the relationship, just the mere fact that one of them is a Muslim and one of them is a Hindu, you know what is best for this woman and what she actually wants and the fact that she hasn't made this made these decisions without being brainwashed. You have just, you know that more than the woman knows herself. It's so condescending to women as a whole, like the fact that you think that they're so easily just manipulated and made to believe that they want things that they don't actually, it's not actually good for Some them. Some of them you will know openly than say that. that Muslim men are just like, they're, they're like, it's not love jihad, it's sex jihad. Like with the implication being that <laughs> like all Muslim men are just like these Fengalis. Like they come and they just cast a spell, and you're just like, "Oh my God, Abdul, take me away!" Like, like they'll openly right. talk about how they're just like more sensuous. Like it comes from such a place of deep insecurity. Like I was joking with one of my friends who's um he identifies as like a cultural muslim in india and i was like did you know that you have this sexual prowess and he's like no but i i sure know now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i keep telling hindu like the hindu men who are so upset about this is that if muslim men are so good at picking up hindu women maybe instead of fighting them you should be taking advice from them maybe ask them what their secrets are all right 
and I always tell them like I'm, I'm always imagining like a whole bunch of like Hindutva people like uh, yeah this I tell people this should be yes, a comedy this is a sitcom that we need to make <laughs> yeah like we the, okay so the opening scene of this uh scenario is that you have a lot of hindu for a man with the saffron color like these muslim men are like taking all hindu women what do we do like we should go we should go to them like and they, they're so like passionate and go to the house of this muslim man and the next scene is that instead of attacking him they're all sitting down and he's like speaking to them and they're all taking notes uh, you like you were made at first you were made to believe that they wouldn't go attack him but they were no they went there passionately because they want to know his secrets and the muslim man is speaking on all the hindu Humans are like taking notes and like okay so you we don't ask for bobs and vagine like no no you don't ask for bob and vagine maybe not on the first day like okay bobs and vagines not on the first date okay so that that's somebody <laughs> somebody make that into a video please okay it's free i'll put it out there for free for anybody who wants to make that uh, uh video okay but we do we should actually read some comments here uh, Katie is saying some are even more extreme. Oh, and extend meaning Hindutva and their their claim over who is Hindu. You know how we're talking about how it goes to Malaysia and so forth. Saying some are even more extreme uh, and extend it to Europe as well because Zeus is actually Indra. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. You're well. I mean, I don't think it's like Indra and Zeus are. Oh yeah, actually, they're not a copy of each other, but I'm, I'm not saying like, Katie knows this. They're both um, proto sky fathers. Pro, yeah, I think they have same origins from the um, Indo European sky father origins. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. So they're using that to also claim Europe. Amazing. Um, okay, proto -sky this is another sky daddy. Katie is saying brainwashing is actually a pretty common accusation here, from what I've observed. People accuse others they don't like of brainwashing, like LGBT rights groups, women's boyfriends, etc. Funny how the the right the evangelical right wing is kind of doing that with the book banning in the U.S. right now too. Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty uh, you know there's a through line there. Um, I don't know what this is in reference to. No, it's the idea of women could be so easily brainwashed like that. It, that that I people who are saying that it makes women seem so dumb. You know, like you're asking, like, oh, you don't like telling Hindu women, like, no, mm. you don't know, you don't love this man. This I know better, like telling all these women that, who are making decisions out of their own free will to be with the men who want. If you tell, keep telling them that no, they know they have been brainwashed, that is just making women seem so dumb. What, what, what did you? <laughs> This this next comment from Nanda. Nanda is saying Armin supporting Love Jihad. Takia ex Muslim shameless. Wait, I can't tell if this is a troll or a real comment. No, it is a it's not a troll. Like this person oh. legitimately thinks oh, this way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the oh yeah, this guy is actually one of those people who actually is serious. You're right. Oh, guys, look at this. This is not a this is not a joke. This accusation is not a joke. This is actually how what people think armin supporting love jihad taria ex-muslim shameless wait you, there was another comment that i had well, I, I think we should move to the next news okay okay sorry all right marvin's like yes yes what are you gonna do about it <laughs> Armin, what 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 text what techniques do you use in your personal love jihad hmm. are you are you going to reveal your secrets Yes, yes. My secret is that they do love jihad on me. Ooh. I, am, yeah. <laughs> I don't even need to do anything. They come to me. <laughs> Guys, there are levels to this love jihad, okay? And we all aspire yeah. to be on Armin's level. <laughs> like, Oof. <Nice. laughs> Yeah, here my secret is being Armin. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder Armin Avabi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below. 